my generation has so much information out there. There's everything's at our fingertips. I could have a question and Google it. And that's amazing power to have. There's this overwhelming feeling of maybe too much information, but this is the way I've grown up. So this is the way I look at it is that I can constantly be stimulated from listening to an audio bit to watching a YouTube video to seeing something on Netflix or reading an article on a blog. And if I try to pull myself away from the work, I tend to, and maybe think about going on a walk, I tend to say, okay, let me throw some headphones in and listen to an audio book. And I'm beginning to think that that might hinder creativity because creativity is so subjective. And the more I think about the idea of creativity, it's so hard to be original. And I don't, and this is a question that I'm pondering is with our new generation coming up with so much information at our fingertips uh, and so easily accessible, will there be less creativity because they're constantly being stimulated by learning new things as opposed to the past generations where you didn't have so much at your fingertips so you could actually take a time to step back and evaluate a situation and just think about things? What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I have a, a firm answer to your question. It is a very good question. And I think what I would say, either way, because I could see it working both directions. I could see people being more creative because they have exposure to more things and allows them to kind of synergize and perhaps see things that they wouldn't have seen otherwise. But I can also see the point you're raising that it could work in the other direction. So I'm not sure. But I do think this, I do think now, and again, I'm not the first person to point this out, but anytime there's, there's new, well, one of the great parts of technologies is that they give us, as you're saying, access to more stuff, connect us with more people. The downside of that, or one downside, is precisely that. You can, you can end up spending your whole day responding to email or on Twitter or on Instagram or whatever, or watching TV, uh, you know, watching the news and getting frustrated by that or getting into Facebook or Twitter debates with people or, or whatever. And so I do think it's important to create space where you are separated from that. And again, how people do that varies greatly from person to person. And I have no, you know, firm rules on that. I mean, again, when I, when I try to focus, I will try to, to tune that stuff out. I won't have Twitter open. I won't open it on my phone. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put away my iPad and my cell phone so that text messages pop up you know, um, I'm not paying attention to them. And I, I, so teach their own with that. But I do think it's important to kind of create these, at least some space for yourself where you are just with yourself to the extent you can be. Again, you never can separate yourself completely from the world. But I certainly do think there's a difference between even taking a walk, even if it's a short walk, with just your thoughts and whatever's going on, cars going down the street or whatever, which there's, there's some stimulus around you always versus a, a headphones, whether it's a, a, a book, a song, a podcast, whatever. Now, other people are different. They, 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 those things allow them to be creative. And so, again, I have no hard and fast rule that I think applies to anyone but myself. But I think the kind of stuff you're talking about with experimentation and self-experimentation is for everything, for foods, for exercise, for what works professionally, I think is just, and it's constantly changing, you know, as we change as people and the world around us changes. And so, 